at night As I hear the storm howling Losing my child Taken by the tide Nowhere to hide I don't know Broken bonds Broken souls Baby you know How it goes Blood stains On the phone Baby call
Peggy 18. Yes? Alan Wake. This is Tom Zane. So Alan Wake 2 is a psychological survival horror game, and the player takes on the role of two different hero characters, the title character, Alan Wake, and a new character, Saga Anderson. Saga was trapped in a horror story. The horror story wanted her dead. I'm so glad this has been recorded. <laughs> there you go! How did the how did the shoot go today? Awesome. It's 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 wonderful to have this rolling. It's been a long time coming. How long have you waited for this to start now? Ah, oh, I don't know. Too long. We waited for a hundred years. Yeah. Like in the dark place, time yeah. loses its meaning. to make it feel like it's a place with a personality. It's not like a rule book for a playbook for like, okay, this is how you, how you make horror. The live action elements are part of the horror for sure. I don't have the space. stories, we only have victims and monsters. It's not so much about the body horror, it's the everyday weird. Things that look just perfectly fine, and then a twist comes and you're like, okay, what's, what's going on here? The morning of the Game Awards, it's happening today. It starts with brushing your teeth. I've been working on games at Remedy something like 26 years. It's been a long, long journey. This by far feels like the biggest announcement. But at the same time, you know, yeah. This story will eat you alive. This story is a monster. I want to say apologies 
it's been raining here in Los Angeles today. <laughs> it's on us. I was like fiction, say. <laughs> fiction leaking out into reality. So sorry. I can't wait to see what you're doing with this game. I know you said to me a while ago, this was your dream project, and I'm so honored that we got to announce this here at the Game Awards. And I think if a good horror manages to give you that feeling, they've really captured something elusive and almost intangible and traumatize the audience in a really, really good way. Monsters wear many faces, tagline for Alan Wake 2. Essentially what makes the environment scary is, is the atmosphere. The only rule that we had was the lyrics need to be about the story. Stay down! Wait, I need a gun! No chance! FBI! At times I've noticed that I felt uneased, even anxious. It's really interesting to bring yourself towards that edge. Yeah, that's quite a conspiracy you've uncovered. We will get a choreographer to do uh, the move. The, the move. Exactly. So I'll get to do that. You'll get to do that, yes. And the winner is Alan Wake 2. I share this with the full narrative team. Direction is nothing without a team actually build it and and huge thanks to remedy team for joining us on this venture wanting to believe believing it and 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 build it uh, you know we can pull into different directions and and nothing comes out of it but when more than 100 people uh, believing the same vision and and build something out of it, we can make miracles, we can make art, and we can be more than the sum of our parts. Uh, our world today could use a bit more of that. Is that the hand signal to start? We can start, <laughs> I think. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I guess that's the internet. Uh, my name is Thomas Poha. I'm the communications director at Remedy. More importantly, joined by this extremely sexy man <laughs> to my right. What is this about? Who are you? I'm, uh, I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> uh, my name is Kyle Rowley. I am the game director on Alan Wake 2. Nice. Um, 
what are we, do, what are we doing test. here? What are we, what I was are we, doing the we're going to get into what, why we why we're here. Uh, I'm just stalling for time so I can actually like read the script and remember <laughs> what we're supposed to say. Um, but uh, you just came back from the the, the Baftas in in London. Mm, I Tell did. Tell us a bit about that. Um, it was amazing. I'd never been to so the. I'm, I'm so glad I didn't go then. No, yeah, yeah. I was like, why is Thomas not going? Um, no, it was really great. Never been to a Baftas before. Never. I did got to do the. The red carpet stuff, you know, I actually walked on a red carpet, uh, did some cool interviews, uh, met, met, I haven't been back. Are those interviews going to get me into trouble later on? <sighs> I don't think so. I think I was okay. all right. I don't know. I, I, it was, you know, there was a lot of, there was, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, topics related to the industry as a large mm -hmm. there. Um, but, you know, I think that I've not been, I am from the UK, if, if no one knew, but, uh, and I've not been back there for... Like I haven't worked there for over ten years now, so I haven't seen a lot of my friends and colleagues from. from... Because Finland is the best. Yeah, exactly. Country in the world. You know, oh, just, why you go know, back? Exactly, I need to go back. But a lot of my friends are there from other studios, so it's really good to catch up with people, and obviously, like getting to represent Remedy, Valenway Two, uh, all the amazing work that the team did on that project, um, and getting the team getting recognition for that work was was amazing. Um, so many good games last year. Like, I haven't got through them all, but um, yeah, it was really cool seeing all the kind of studios and teams representing those games as well. Uh, really just and nice celebration Just like games. wherever we go, it's always uh, the lovely folks at Larian and Baldur's Gate 3 who are always yeah. up against. Yeah, it's always <laughs> there. I mean, it's a great game. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, if I'm going to lose to anybody, then I think that's a good game to lose yeah. to on, in that regard. So, yeah, yeah but great. it was really great. Yeah, really liked it. It's certainly the end of as well, the tail end of all of those awards that we've kind of like, it's been going on. So, yeah, you know, after after game awards and we went and dice and, and that kind of stuff. So there's good. still there's still a few. There's still a few. And while you were gone, uh, I actually played through the Night Springs DLC. Oh, we nice. can't we can't say much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, like it, it's, it's. So we have we have Night Springs, which we're working on right now, and then yeah. also we have obviously coming a bit after that um, the Lake House. So those, yeah. the, those are the two expansions that we've we've kind of announced. So, so we're definitely still working on uh, more Alan Wake Tool, um, but a bit about the series of streams that that we're going to do. We get asked every once in a while that should we stream more and things like that. Uh, and I'm personally of the view that like we only ever really want to talk when there's something to say uh, or something to show. So I'm not really a fan of just like streaming for streaming's sake. Um, so what me and Carl are doing here now is actually we kind of call this like episode zero. Prologue. So we're gonna prologue, correct. Uh, thank you. More more cultured man than 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 I am. Um, and we have a few episodes or streams coming now in the spring. Then we're going to pause for the summer uh, and then come back uh, swinging. But we wanted to kind of set the tone in this uh, prologue episode and kind of give you a bit of like a sampler of why we're doing this and what we're going to um, talk about. But really what these streams are going to be about is how we made Alan Wake 2 and hopefully be able to give you a more idea, a better idea of what it's like making games and kind of show you a bunch of stuff uh, from production because we rarely kind of show that. I think in games in general, rarely is a lot of... Um... Like in development stuff. Yeah. No, no. And I would like to show that stuff, you know, while we're making the game, but it's not possible, obviously, until afterwards. But, yeah, it's also that it's... Uh... It's just an interesting process where people sometimes feel like, you know, because it's work in progress, we don't want to show it because people will kind of like judge judge it based on that. Um, even when we're doing like trailers and stuff like that, it's funny, like the discussions that go on about like, oh, what, what are we okay to show and not, uh, not okay to show? This isn't final. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We need to still need to show something that's interesting. So, And we, we do get um, quite a lot of questions about like, could we show more stuff? from our games when they're in production but it's exactly like like you said like showing stuff that's very unfinished it's hard to kind of contextualize it team members feel even internally when we show stuff that's work in progress there's a lot of concern from the dev team members like oh like my stuff or my content is gonna look not as great as i want it to be and and i'm like you know what like you are within remedy like it it's like all the stuff we do is is cool it's fine to show it but it just kind of tells you like how challenging it is especially then we start making trailers when like like nothing is almost good enough <laughs> and like you know it's hard to show like final quality content like when you're two years out mm. or even when you're like six months out yeah yeah because um, it all comes together right at the end yeah well, at least here it does but I oh, think i've it... heard I've, I've heard that that's the case of other yeah as well that that that's just that's just how it goes um 
But the genesis um, of this idea comes from what we call the milestone videos. So um, we make these, well, Carl, you want to first talk about what exactly are milestones in video games? Yeah, I mean, I, as we're making the game and we're going through the course of development from pre-production where we're kind of focused on what is the concept of the game, what is the vision of the game, like what is the design of this game, what's the kind of art direction, and we're, we're looking at it very like high level holistic, like so we can figure out what we want to make. Um, and then as we're going through production, we basically have like, they're almost like, um, well, they're milestones of a development. So there's certain goals we want to achieve at certain dates, and we will assign that, we will call that a milestone. And then basically there's X number of milestones throughout the course of the whole development, um, with bigger ones being things like, you know, alpha, when you've kind of got all your content complete and, and elements like that. Um, but yeah, we basically have, that's kind of like our what we could what we just call a milestone and, and in anaway two's development to to communicate the progress we've made during those milestones both internally inside remedy and also to uh, epic games publishing our wonderful publisher uh we we asked the amazing video team inside remedy to kind of capture elements of the work that was done during the last milestone and then put together a series of uh sequences with music that kind of showcased that that, that those things that we worked on so we put a lot of effort into these things. Of course, they're supposed to inspire as well, like show what we've been uh, up to. Because making games is is definitely a bit bit of a slog, and like often, like throughout production, it's often like nothing's really working, and it's just like very slow. But it's very good to kind of take a step back and kind of look at these accomplishments. Yeah, it's, well, it's hard to do that during production, though. I think it's also because team size is so big now. Like you may be working on something inside like one small aspect of the wider game and not really have much visibility into what the rest of the team are working on. So this is also acts as a nice way for us to almost do like show and tells of like, hey, this other cool stuff was worked on in addition to this awesome stuff that you were working on. And as you said, that kind of works as almost like a, a motivation or inspiration for, for the team as they're moving through the production process. And and like you said, like we provide these milestones to publishers. That's kind of how they gauge like how... how progress is made and sometimes even like, you know, your milestone payments are like uh, tied to that. So it pays to make <laughs> make make these videos good. So in the upcoming streams, uh, there's going to be several development uh, team, team members and there'll be actually a great host because uh, Vida, who's sitting right here on my right hand side, is going to be um, ho hosting them. So it'll be a lot more entertaining uh, than we are now. Hey, what do you <laughs> But no, you're you're doing fine. Uh, and then Julius here on the on the left is like manning the the, the DJ booth. Uh, just imagine that people behind the scenes are doing important stuff. But we'll show kind of the in progress version of the games uh, and and let a variety of folks who worked on the game kind of talk about the things they they've done on the game. Um, but I think now that we've talked about these milestone videos and what was kind of like the idea why we should like. Um, do these streams and kind of talk a bit more about how we made Alan Wake 2. And this is very much like if you're into making games and you're into Alan Wake 2, this is for you. Like if this is for the initiated, like if you're randomly are seeing this video, then um, you probably should probably read about Alan Wake and, and Remedy before you get into this um, stuff. But there'll, feel, there'll, feel, feel free spoilery. to buy the game. That's fine. I like, guess there'll be some spoilery footage potentially. So this is this is true. If you if you can recognize from what what parts of the game yeah, if, you, if you can recognize yeah i mean so it's, it's yeah. looks a little bit different so so we're gonna show i think the first milestone video is from 2021 we started working on alan wake to really about in 2019 i'm mean, sure the ideas and and sort of all sorts of concepts have been around especially with sam january 9 january 2019 was when i started at remedy again. yeah uh and that's when like it was me and our ep uh, and then Sam was obviously doing uh, control stuff. Yeah. So I was working on concept of the game, meeting with Sam occasionally to discuss stuff. And then we started bringing team members onto the project as we were finishing off control. Um, and that's when we started going into like prototyping and like yeah. uh, that pre-production phase, which I just mentioned earlier, where we we're kind of figuring out the concept, trying to get a grasp on the game structure, um, that those kind of things that, that happened in yeah 2019. Yeah. yeah. So let's take a look at video of how Anna Wake 2 looked like in 2021. I want to say April, maybe. Yeah, well, it's basically four, wait, three years ago. Yeah, yeah. almost to the day. Yeah. And as you were saying, our water looked pretty good back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and our trees. We, I mean, you can see there's not really much wind going on there. So no, I don't think no. we had. There's some there though. This is maybe even from the visual target. Maybe. I think this bit may be from yeah. the visual target actually yeah. that we did. So visual target is like where we try and figure out what the game will visually look like quite early on. So we have something to a, a try and aim towards. And this is the subway. If you've played Initiation Two. Yeah. So uh, that dark place i think that was yeah. like we started working the first thing we worked on the dark place was that the subway I yeah it think. was it, it was not like this this layout here is kind of similar but we we did change this quite a lot through the course of development because it was act, acting as what we call a proof of concept mission which is where we would um try and prove the concept that we'd figured out like in 2019 and 2020 to what that was kind of going to look like um, and this was that mission, so we went for quite a lot of iterations over the course of of the development. So, all right, well, let's move on. That's like very that that vista is very close to the vista we had in the actual final yeah. game as well. And as you can see, like we have a lot of like all, all the all of the elements of Bright Force that were there in the final game were were there in in this great location, just very block out uh, placeholder. And as you see, we also have a copy world sign there, which was new and added for this game. But it's it's also illustrates like just how long it takes, uh, especially when our team is a bit bit smaller than than we probably would have for a game of this this magnitude. But uh, it just takes a very long time to get, you know, really finished graphics. And it's not just like having, you know, final textures in place. We change the propping so much, but unless you know you have the right materials, you the lighting's not going to be there for like quite a while really mm. in final shape and form so it's like we don't maybe every day work on uh let's say like the diner there but like throughout the years it's like there's almost constant work going on in the same locations and like even in the last six months even in the last three months like the amount even of the last three weeks <laughs> yeah the, like the small amount of polish like that go goes into these levels just makes like a huge difference. And obviously, the reason that we keep them that way for as long as we can is is because it, when we change stuff, it's yeah. a lot less expensive to if we've if we've modeled everything, Great and point. textured everything, and lit everything, and then we need to change it. Then it's much more expensive than if we just kind of rough it out. We try and keep it that way so we can be as flexible as possible for as long as possible until we start running into like okay, now we actually need to do this so because the the pipeline is so long to get the final stuff in there that we need to start locking this stuff that's down. Not, so that that that's a great point. And like when we build. I know to like the subway mission in the dark place because um, we then test that quite a lot. So it does need to have pretty, pretty good graphics so that people can kind of understand the location, where are they supposed to go and thing, things like that. Uh, but that 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 was a prime example where I think in the end we probably cut out like half uh, I mean, that I, level I think, yeah, because I mean, it was way too big anyway. But yeah, the initial version was massive. Yeah, we yeah. cut over half, and then towards the end we actually cut out a whole seat. We cut a backtracking sequence out just yeah. because players were getting lost. So yeah, I mean that was at the point where like we couldn't change geometry, but we could still change flow, logic yeah. flow, as in like we could change how the player went through the mission. So we did that really quite late actually, based on again as you say, based on player feedback and user testing so yeah and it's like that was kind of acting as the example of like okay what is an alan way two level in the dark place mm -hmm. so it's okay that it's big and we cut stuff down because then that's kind of what kind of shows us okay like now we got it and then making the next missions a bit bit easier it's like a template yeah for the, for the future missions effectively all right what else do we have we have well mr sam lake yeah <laughs> in game oh it's an old it's a uh, um uh, old Valor nursing home uh, what, I can't remember her I name. Donna. Remember. Donna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she, yeah, yeah, she yeah, gets she angry when you interrupt. Yeah. White life safe zone. So this is what we end up calling in the final game. It, it's safe havens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But these, the these dev took... name was white light. White light zone for a yeah, long they, time. Yeah, they took quite a lot of iteration because for the longest time, every time people played it, they would not understand the rules of how they would work. So like for a while, we had it um, that when you would run into one, yeah. enemies could know that you went into one. And they would basically try and grab you out of it, um, and then that just wasn't working. And then we had it so they know you go in there and they just linger around, and then they'd forget. Uh, so we ended up, and we we couldn't get it to work for the longest time, both visually and gameplay wise. So we ended up like having a focus session where, for like a set period of time, a team of people came together and we tried to figure out how to solve them. So the actual final version of this, where like when you would walk in. No matter where you were and where an enemy was, they would immediately kind of go into this hunting state. And the fact that when you leave, it collapses was something that we added relatively late on, actually, in production. So it was just one of those things where, you know, it seems like when you play it, oh, it's quite a simple feature. 
but like on design when we started it was quite complicated and over time we ended, ended up simplifying it which ended it's, just, it's actually funny because it happens a lot through the course of game development it always ends up we try and aim for something more complex and interesting and end up just having to simplify it because well the next thing is a prime example of that we don't need to get into that so mm. heavily because i think in the following episodes we'll talk about it. i mean the map was we knew there was there was always going to be a map in Alloway too as opposed to in like control where we got a lot of criticism rightly so about the map not being great but we added the map in like the last six months because there was not supposed to be a map in control but of course in Alloway, Wake where the environment's a lot bigger uh there was a map from the very beginning but like we iterated so many times on on this yeah map. i mean the first iteration of the map was done in 2019 and the way that we did the way that we did it when our designers took the gameplay camera and moved it up above the map so it looked like a 2d yeah. plane and then basically would add a bunch of like uh um Ent entities which are kind of part of our engine and then then kind of uh, just flag them up so that we it was like the, the most hacky version but we knew we wanted to have one early on and we knew we wanted it to be part of the pacing of the level that you would oh i'd go check my map and this idea that oh when i'm in the in the mind place or the writer's room that it's potentially dangerous so we really wanted to kind of push the player inside even the very early iterations of the game to try and to get that that part of it and obviously here this, the, the whole map is diegetic so Basically, we had a 2D artist creating custom maps for all of our locations across both the Pacific Northwest and um, the Dark Place. Um, and because they're custom made and, and like hand drawn, like any time we changed the level lay lay layouts, they had to redo them. So we didn't have really final maps until again, right until the end. This yeah, is like happens, because... it just happens that way across many different assets aspects of game development. Everything yeah. is, is done right at the end because we know we can't change it anymore. So, yeah. All right, let, let's watch it to the end. The whole point is that they're only in the f upcoming streams or talk. That's a the first version of a thrower. Uh, this stuff. changed quite a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. Visually, we changed, worked on that for, for, for quite a while. Concepts for the cultists and, you know, uh, Mr. Zane. Yeah, and this, of course, changed when Ilka kind of got to really embody the characters. One of the points was like that Alan Wake is so established, but with Zane, like Ilka could have a lot more. That the actor, the physical actor of... um of Alan Wake that he could have a lot more freedom in creating yeah. uh, the, yeah. the character, which isn't necessarily reflected here because then he had some thoughts on like how Zane should look yeah, and, and these sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. But this is a, that's a shot that you see quite early on in the actual yeah. dark place as well. And this is kind of just an example of like us trying to build atmosphere. Sorry. Even though we were in kind of using white box assets, we still tried to do a lighting pass on the levels to try and make sure that we would try and nail the horror. Because yeah. even we didn't need necessarily final textures, and we knew if we could scare you with that, then then we would have a good job of scaring you when actually all the final assets came in. This is a prototype that we never actually shipped in the game, where you would basically be able to burn off aspects of darkness inside the level itself to unblock passageways, like bigger, bigger sprawling ones. You can see it's right reacting. We did have a, like the darkness reacting to the light in some way in the main game. Yeah. Like we had an effect, but it was kind of more subtle. Um, so, and what's this? <laughs> plot, plot board. Yeah, we'll probably get into that in, in a later stream. But like, yeah, this is another feature in the game that probably like was worked on for like two years. I mean, it kind of started with the uh, uh, Saga's version of it, um, which, which was more complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but again, like you're trying to present a lot of informa information in a very condensed way, but then also try to make it well cool as well, and and part of the design and everything. And it just it just takes a lot of iteration. Yep. To get this stuff done. I remember we were doing the the dark place demo, and I was we didn't have final visuals on some aspects, and I was like, oh my god, we can't show this. <laughs> and everyone was like, shut up, Carl. They won't even know. Yeah, <laughs> I think like, that was me. Yeah, probably, probably you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was adding injured, injured locomotion. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot of new things in this game, like also like the fact that we have weapons physically on the character was totally new for us. So a lot of new animation tech done. Um, dismemberment was something that, uh, not dismemberment, but the wound system was yeah, something that was yeah. new for us as well. So we had a lot of new stuff that we were trying to achieve in the, in the game. So we had almost, lot... almost seems like we shipped with not as good water as we had. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know no I disrespect know. to the team, but yeah, the, <laughs> the water was like a tricky thing. All right, so what are we queuing up next? Milestone 10? 10? 12. 12. So this is, let's see. This is 22, was it? You're doing really well, Carl. Am I? Yeah. Awesome. Fant fantastic job. Great. You too, Thomas. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> February 2022, yeah. So this is getting 
yeah. A this bit is, glass. This is when yeah. we were scanning yeah. the characters, basically the actual the actual cast. Yeah. Um, I mean, we would know the cast well before, but just like getting the actual models mm -hmm. and everything. And this yeah. is not like, this is not like this is stuff that happened in the previous month and not just like in that month. It's basically like a quarter's full, like a yeah. quarter's worth of progress. So obviously, you can see just from the the visuals on the, the environments that we're getting a bit closer to what we ended up shipping with. Yeah. For the longest time, we were just fighting this man with a moustache, like this bold guy with a moustache. He was like our <laughs> only enemy for that. He was basically he was everywhere. Everywhere. He was there everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this, like, let's pause here. Like, just how much if we go back to that story, like, because that, that's a pretty iconic alleyway, alley, alleyway, and just like how much detail came in later from the graffiti to the VFX yeah. to the rain we added uh, a lot to of, the uh, fade out. We added, we added a lot of um, like garbage on the floor. Oh like my a lot god, of... the garbage. I was at some point got yelling, we have enough garbage <laughs> man, like it's too much. Yeah, we, we were aiming for that taxi driver, dirty, you know, dark version of New York. Yeah. And, you know, right now it doesn't look like that, but you can see by the time we got there, kind of like that, that definitely came across for, for all of that stuff that you, that you kind of were alluding to. Um, and a lot of people, I, like, like some places would be like, "Well, this looks fine. We can we can ship this." <laughs> no, 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 not no, here. No, no. <laughs> not, not here. No. no way. Yeah, we obviously have quite a simple traversal system. Just we we have the ability to climb and drop down from stuff, but you know, still needs animations. Needs animations for double double handed weapons, single handed weapons, yeah. like flashlight out, flashlight in, like you know. Even though it's quite simple, it still adds because of the, the the kind of weaponry adds a lot of complexity. Because we wanted the, everything to be full physical. Um, this is us trying to like prototype some slightly more exotic combat encounters. Very final looking enemies. Yeah, we'd really like to get more of this. We'd really like to get more of those kind of like custom encounters into the final game. And this is another example where like this was part of the first uh, demo we showed back at Summer Games Fest Play Days. I want to say June twenty three. Uh, and like it looks all right here, but like everything from where are the people exactly placed, and I don't think that other bench is even there in the end. Just the amount of detail that um, went into this area, especially, is, is I don't think there's massive. any animations actually on those characters yeah. at this point. And as you can see, we have a not so naked guy. <laughs> yeah. And this way, dodgy bar that was there for the longest time. <laughs> we basically had this like follow the graffiti kind of uh, sorry follow the neon lights like element to this mission. This was in initiation five, um, and like for the longest time, it was just like the dot the, the neon signs would just say like go this way, no this yeah. way, just say <laughs> so yeah. But then the writing pet team basically do a pass like on so like this would be something that for example um, the mission designers and the environment artists would say hey uh, that we need to, we want to have to follow this neon signs as like an element for this mission and we would place some placeholders like this but then the writing team would come and do a pass on all of this text and all of the text that you saw inside the dark place was like we would have elements of it there early on but like we would do one big pass at, towards the end of the game where like all of that stuff makes more sense uh, narratively so because they're busy writing the screenplay and, and stuff that's needed yeah. for cinematics until that point so but yeah, in early 22, like, games started to start start to actually look like a game. And Blur VFX was one of the key elements we used, actually, for showcasing darkness in the game. This was our manuscript um, interface, which is all done through debug uh, text, as you can see, not properly rendered UI. But again, showing the kind of core structure of it, even though it did change, you know, as we, when we actually shipped. But you can see, like, how it kind of starts up to prove ideas and... It's quite it was it was important for us that we got features in early, even yeah. if they were not like like the finished thing, just because it helps us to prove the wider game loop rather than like just the focus on that one specific thing. Um, yeah, we had to do new tools so that we could actually, you know, do all that foliage and terrain. So ladder animation. Oh, that's the that's the one you know, binder was one of the we called it binder internally. It was actually ship it was called I can't remember what we actually We actually called. decided against um like we had this lo lot of discussion on this, like I was like, okay, like what, what, what do we when we publicly communicate about the game and people ask about the uh, enemies, like do we have names for them? And we kind of went back and forth that we have these dev names, but they're kind of just dev names, and we ended up not really. We have them in the tutorial text. Like we that, we that's do. That's the only place yeah. we kind of reference them. But we ended up being somewhat vague. Yeah. Well, we just say like taken. That's kind of like uh, yeah. we say for taken. Yeah. Um, and then when we were talking about enemies in the dark place, we called them fade outs internally and ended up like getting stuck. And I can't remember if we actually called them shadows in the in the tutorials, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there was like we did talk 
about them as fade outs. Yeah. Like I think it's some public documentation, but like yeah. I, I think we ended up like okay, that 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 sounds good. Okay, um, I think that's all the milestone videos we're gonna. There's plenty more of those though to come with the other te- other people in the team who yeah. did awesome yeah. work on some of this stuff. A lot more details to show about you know narrative and other elements. So. Yeah. So actually now probably good good time to uh, talk about what some of the upcoming streams will be, and of course they will be live, so you have the ability to. Uh, ask questions in the chat. Of course, you know, be nice. Uh, we're going to show you a lot of lot of cool stuff uh, from, and we we try to bring out people uh, into the streams uh, who are not so used to like. Uh, they're great at talking about their work, but a bit less used to kind of doing it in in front of camera. But a lot of folks are pretty eager to like come talk about it, and and we we bribe them and coax them uh, to to do it. So please be nice. But what we have for you, like. Um, Hopefully these dates are correct, but hey, magical post-production, Julius, you can fix anything. So April 18th, it's going to be about audio and music. Uh, May Which we just won a BAFTA for. That's right. Richard was there there on, on, on stage. So that, that Congratulations, worked out. Congratulations, audio that, team. That worked out well. Um, May 2nd, it's cinematics uh, on live action. I think we have... Ansi Mart is going to be here. Yep, yeah. and, and others. May 16th. The Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Bunch of people talking about yeah. forest. Yeah, and and how we built the, the forest. Design. Yeah. And like the level design of the forest and the mission design there, of the there's, forest. There's a lot to talk about there. And also, you know, Pacific Northwest is like it's just a key part of the Anaheim yeah. franchise. So it was very important that we had that in the game. Um, but you know, how do we freshen it up and make it like more modern yeah. and how do we kind of bring it up to the, the current generation of consoles? So I guess there'll be a lot of discussion about that. So. Yeah. And then May 30th uh, is kind of the mid-season ender or whatever the <laughs> right word to use is. It's going to be about the dark place. So I'm assuming Mr. Darkness himself, Nazareno probably, mm. will be will be chatting about that. Uh, and then we kind of go on like a break uh, during the summer uh, on a well-earned break uh, and then come back uh, in late summer. Uh, all, all the talk about summer in Finland is very relative. relative. We don't even know if we're going to have summer in this country or not. Um, but um, summer for everyone else, <laughs> except for Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll have a couple of more streams then, um, and you know, you can now that you know some of the uh, topics we're going to cover, you can think about questions you might want to ask from the dev team members, and it's also important. Uh, to realize that we're not going to really have anything that's newsworthy. That's not why you should be. We're not going to talk about our future games or reveal anything particularly newsworthy, but we're going to talk about all the cool stuff that people have done uh, to sort of produce the magic that is that is um, Alan Wake 2. And we have, I think one of the things like when we started production under, when, when COVID kind of then happened, we were good about documenting behind the scenes stuff at, at Remedy, but then when everything was just like a Zoom call, I was getting kind of like, well, what, like we have, like we got nothing. And then we kind of got back into the office and we we're almost like overcompensated and getting like every every time we had like an actor or something cool happening, we would just like shoot a bunch of footage to make sure that we could kind of document uh, the making of Alan Wake 2. So you'll get to see. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of that stuff, so I'm excited. Oh, I, I could tell you the network drive where all of this resides and you no. can just go go on. Like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Till <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the stream. I'm yeah. going to no. be leaving comments. Nice ones. Correct. Anonymously. Yes, <laughs> show, show, show a good example. Okay, uh, anything else I should say? No? All right, okay, well, it'll only get better. Hey. Tr- trust me on that. I mean, Carl, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be great. Uh, so if you're into Alan Wake 2, uh, if you've been supporting us, you know, massive thank you to all the community. We're definitely doing this to the fans and the community. Like, this is definitely for you folks, uh, wherever you are. So please stay tuned. Uh, for the upcoming streams and be nice, nice to the devs. Thank you very much, Kyle. Thank you, Vida and Julius, for making us look good. So awesome. Thank until, you. Until next time. Thank you. The killer left the heart next to the body. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. A page of text written with a typewriter. Someone's been watching us. How do you run from an idea? From a story that lives in your head? I need to escape this nightmare.
Wake says the story will change reality around us. Show me the terror. Show me the terror.